we tried speedrunning the Knight's Edge in Terraria. The Knight's Edge speedrun is one of the most highly contested speedruns in all of Terraria. So I called up my friend Therm and we decided to try it. The point of the run is obvious, to try and craft the Knight's Edge as quickly as possible. For context, the Knight's Edge is crafted by combining four swords from each biome in pre-hard mode. The Blade of Grass from the jungle, the Muramasa from the dungeon, either the Blood Butcherer or the Light's Bane from your words evil, we decided to go crimson for this one, and finally the Volcano from hell. We're complete Terraria noobs, but can we get close to the co-op world record at 1820? Kind of, but we'll get there, hold on. Here's how we started the run. Okay, Therm, this is what I think basically we should do. You run that way, I run this way. And then whoever hits the jungle first, you'll be the jungle guy. Then that person has to go to the jungle and then hell. And then the other person has to go to the corruption and then beat Skeletron. Yeah, and the brand of Cthulhu and whatnot. Yes, of course. So that was the basic plan. Split up the work and have each person do half. I went to the right and Thurm went to the left and he quickly finds the Crimson, which will be helpful uh, eventually. But unfortunately, without any bombs, there wasn't really much he could do at the current moment. I continue going right until I find the jungle, which cemented me and Therm's roles. I would attempt to go through the jungle and craft the blade of grass, and then eventually get to hell to craft the volcano, while Therm would focus on taking out the two bosses we need to kill by the crimson and the dungeon. I go down into the jungle and start looking for spores. While eventually I'll need to kill a lot of enemies for vines and stingers, I know that at the start of this run I don't have nearly enough equipment for that, so for now it's just much smarter to patiently farm the spores. I slink down through the caves, attempting to find some sort of weapon to give me a leg up against these difficult enemies. On Therm side, things have gone a little off track, because even though Therm had found the Crimson like he needed to, without coming across any bombs, there was nothing he could really do, forcing him to come back and look for additional chests with bombs or dynamite. As I continue venturing through the jungle, I quickly remember that I'm actually not good at this game, and I'm swiftly sliced in half by a hornet. Oh, I died. Therm and I were back at the spawn again with no equipment or resources, all but negating the first few minutes of our run. At this point in the stream, me and Therm truly believed that we might be able to have a competitive time, and we were completely unwise to the road of hardship and failure that soon awaited us. Therm, I'm gonna be honest, I think we're gonna have to do a second run after this. Okay, so in the speed run that I watched, by the end of night one, Brain of Cthulhu dead, they're on their way to Skeletron. All right, we where and where do we stand in comparison? Okay, it's about to be night. Okay, and what have you done? Because I've done a lot. I've died. I, Me too, but like besides that, we, that's just kind of like obvious. I can't think of another single thing that I've done actually. Okay, I've looted some chests and I've located the crimson. Okay, I found the jungle then if we're just picking straws here. We gotta give ourselves some sort of credit. I'm gonna be honest. Oh, what the heck? Okay, all right. Therm, can we start over? <laughs> But I'm doing so good. Are you? So we decided to start over. I generate a new world, and this time I go to the left. Because we're just like crazy like that. Like, we're turning this whole speed run on its head, guys. After going down into a cave, I enter the ice biome, which means that I'll be on the same side of the world as the dungeon, making me the boss guy. This job seems a lot harder than the alternative, so I was scared for my life as I knew I'd only have a couple minutes to prepare to take on both the Brain of Cthulhu and Skeletron, meaning that I need to find a good weapon fast. I head further down to the cave, looking for something to give me an edge up against all these bosses. I reach the end of my cave and recall back to the surface as Therm heads back to the surface in a much different way. I head back over to the left, looking for more caves on the surface, but to no avail. I find the crimson in the dungeon, which is great, but needs nothing without a way to take them out. This was my first big mistake of the run. Instead of continuing to look for gear, I should have just made the best of what I already had in my inventory. Back in my first chest of the run, I was able to pick up four grenades. This was only 57 seconds in. After reaching the end of my first cave and recalling home, I should have 100% just built four houses so that demolitionists could move in. Then I could buy bombs to break open the Crimson Hearts, which would guarantee me a powerful Undertaker. Or just buy grenades, as they're an effective weapon in their own right. Regardless, I did not do that and instead make my way all the way to the ocean with no good gear to speak of. Having reached the world's end, I teleport back to spawn. On Therm's side, he's having slightly more success as he's reached the jungle and has started gearing up as he slowly edges his way down to hell. Things are going great until, uh, he encounters a small issue. Oh. After returning home, I decide to head down into the crimson for some reason with no bombs. I couldn't tell you why I did this, but my time there does not last very long. Well, I don't know where to get these bombs! Upon returning back to spawn, I do what I probably should have done 10 minutes ago and start building my NPC prisons. I build four so that I can 100% ensure that Mr. Bombs moves in. It's at this point that, well... Officially, we have lost the speedrun record, Therm. Hashtag wake me up when September ends, am I right? 
Now that we had lost the record time, we had a new goal, a new reason to exist. And that goal was just to be better than these guys sitting at the bottom. In life, you don't always have to be the best. Far from it. But you certainly cannot be the worst, and that's what I was striving for, to be one of the slots above Yelling Potato, pushing them further down into obscurity. Um, sorry Yelling Potato, it's nothing personal. With our new, slightly less lofty goal in mind, we continued embarking on our journey. I go to the snow biome as I eagerly await the arrival of the bomb man himself, while Therm trudges back through the jungle after his untimely death, which you know, quickly becomes timely again. My journey of waiting had taken me all the way back to the dungeon again. For some reason. This may seem like a worthless adventure, but little did you haters know, it was gonna lead to the single most important piece of this run. Wait, I think I might have just found something crazy. I found one of those sword shrines. <gasps> Wait, I got an enchanted sword! Wow! That's, that's super good! With a powerful weapon in hand, all that was left for me to do was wait for the demo man to move in. I need bombs. Oh my god! <gasps> Boom! And just like that, this run had taken a huge turnaround. In just a matter of minutes, I got a greatly powerful weapon and the key to unlocking the first obstacle of this run. Slaying the brain of Cthulhu. However, I realized I had another massive problem the second I opened up his shop menu. I have no money. If I was smart, there was an ad there, and if I forgot, this is just really awkward. Regardless, I was flat broke, meaning that I would not be able to buy any of the demo man's precious wares. I'm able to buy exactly nine bombs, but without grenades, getting through these bosses is gonna prove very trying. That's when I decided to randomly open up some canned worms I had sitting in my inventory to try and get any amount of money. And somehow, I get a golden worm, which I didn't even know was a thing, but apparently there's a 5% chance to get these in each can of worms, which sells for 10 whole gold. I pick up a stack of grenades, bombs, and dynamite and head straight down into the crimson. I blow up some crimson hearts, but not before unceremoniously trapping myself in a room with crimstone with my bombs. Oh, I've been on- Oh, no, 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 You got blowed up. Thank you. I make my way back, construct a small arena to fight the brain, and summon him in. Oh, 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 You're right there. Oh, 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 oh. It's brain time. Yeah, that locked and loaded. Oh, shoot. Okay. I don't need to kill you. Okay, I died. That's fine. <laughs> you can kill me though. Yeah, that's fine. Y you go ahead, do your thing. After getting enough tissue samples to make the sword, I let the brain kill me and head back to spawn. When I respawned, Therm was home for some non-ideal reasons. Ah! So I decided that after crafting the required sword we needed, that I would give him the rest of the spoils that I got. You know, because that's just the kind of warm, loving friend that I am. With that, Therm heads back to the jungle and I head all the way to the left to take on Skeletron to gain access to the dungeon below. And this fight proved less than ideal. Firstly, the major problem I had was a complete lack of movement. No feather fall potion, no clown in a bottle, no balloon, no Hermes boots, not even a grappling hook. All I had was one single Aglet, clutching on to the single piece of plastic in the face of a bone giant. This made dodging any of the bony fellers' attacks quite difficult. And on top of that, I do this. <gasps> no! Which, you know, did not help at all. I honestly think that my weapon is good for this, though yes, maybe I could have upgraded from a tin bow, but really just a general lack of dodging ability led to a quick demise for me. <laughs> This was pretty bad because now I'd need to wait a full other day for Skeletron to be available again. And to top it off, Therm was losing steam quick. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I only have 11. Oh my God, I miscounted. I freaking warped out of the jungle. I'm one stinger away and I have to walk all the way back. Therm! Wait, why did you just craft an anvil there? If you bring it with you, then you can go straight from the jungle to hell. Oh, I forgot that was my good job. And we also realized that I never crafted the Deathbringer pickaxe from our Brain of Cthulhu spoils. Oh god, I, I need to get Hellstone. I don't have a freaking Nightmare pickaxe. There's not enough metal to make a Nightmare pickaxe. So even if Therm was to make it all the way down to hell, he would have no way of actually mining any of the ore. 
Yeah, 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 we're gonna end up at the bottom of this list, aren't we? I decided this time to just teleport to Therm, as clearly we weren't making good progress on our own. But once we got to the jungle together, things actually started to turn around. We start making some progress, we find the spores, and an extra batch of Crintame ore. I'm kidding. Therm accidentally summons Queen Bee, and she kills us both and sends us right back to spawn. <sighs> But upon respawning, we get into another cave system, and this time we actually start making progress. And I finally find the one accessory that I had been needing this entire run. <gasps> A gold chest! Oh, did you actually believe me? You fool! You think that anything in this run could possibly go right? You're absolutely insane! At this point, we had lost any sort of momentum that we once had, both in the game and mentally. That was so stupid. I can't believe we just did that. Yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. That was so dumb. All right, let's go. After putzing around for 20 minutes or so, we grab some much needed accessory upgrades. Dude, I got a uh, Hermes boots. We grabbed the last board we needed, allowing us to craft the blade of grass, meaning we only had two swords left to go. <laughs> I go back to the Crimson and fight the Brain of Cthulhu again and get enough Crim Tame for the Deathbringer pickaxe, which I give to Therm to bring down to hell. As he heads down to hell, I'm tasked with fighting my old nemesis, Skeletron. I arrive at the Faded Dungeon once again, the spot of my previous plunder. I couldn't lose again, or we'd have to wait a full other day to challenge him. I tie my recently acquired balloon around my wrist, make sure my Hermes boots are strapped on tight, and ask for the old man's curse once again. This time, the fight goes a lot smoother as I'm actually able to move out of the way of his attacks as opposed to just taking them in the face. I came much more prepared this time as well with a tungsten bow. Despite all my upgrades though, this is no easy fight. In fact, he gets me down to a single HP multiple times. It takes about the whole night, but finally, somehow I'm able to kill Skeletron. Yes, I am! I'm unlimited! But not a moment to rest as I head down into the dungeon. And it goes very well. No! I'm doing the worst, clearly. Are you choking? I'm not very good at this game. But after nearly 40 minutes of searching for the sword, I had finally found it. Oh, I got the Muramasa! The Muramasa was in my grasp. Luckily, by this point, Therm had long since grabbed the volcano. We teleport back to the Crimson, I craft the Night Edge, and we finish with a time of 15701. That was rough. I was expecting that to go a lot easier. We got our butts kicked. And for all that work, we sat all the way down in 18th place. Ugh. But were we really going to let it end there? After all that work we had put in, just let our record sit at more than eight times the world's record? Yes, yes we were. Well, at least that was the answer, until I realized that this video needed a good conclusion. I mean, for honor! It was time to prove ourselves to the world and get a world record time. And I had a secret trump card I'd been hiding this whole time. The co-op category for this run's only rule is that it has to be a co-op run with no limits on the amount of players, meaning that we could easily add another person to our team, and I had been saving my secret weapon for just this occasion. This is my good friend Habu. You may know him from his world record Stardew Valley speedruns, but he also has a Terraria world record for fastest Moon Lord kill. Until a shimmer exploit allowed someone to take it from him, but that is not important. What is important is that it means that our dear friend Habu is also one of the best Terraria players out there, so I decided to enlist his help, for him to team up with us and to overcome this record, and to no longer sit as embarrassments, but instead as kings. The three of us load into a new world and instantly we go along with our new plan. I'll head to the right, Therm will head to the left, and Resonant Pro Habu will stay at spawn and build houses. Yes, we have one of the best Terraria speedrunners in the world at our disposal, and we're using him to build houses. As I head to the right, I run into the desert, which means that this time I'm on the jungle side, meaning it's my job to help Habu search for jungle spores until Therm has found the crimson, and has the bombs to blow up the hearts. I head to the jungle and start looking for gear, but despite my best efforts, I can't find a single weapon besides this umbrella, meaning that this umbrella, one of the weakest weapons in all of Terraria will have to be my weapon for the rest of this run. Oh boy. On Therm's side, he's found a ton of goodies from the ice biome, giving him plenty of gear for the fight with the Brain of Cthulhu. Meanwhile, Abu is digging through the jungle, trying to get the materials for the Blade of Grass and eventually make his way down to hell. While gearing up, I meet Habu in the jungle, and he brings me a bunch of life crystals, which should help out a ton in surviving. You're dead. You were right.
Well, uh, not, not that much, I guess. After unceremoniously heading home, we decide that in order for us to get a good time, we're going to need to take on the Brain of Cthulhu right away. Unfortunately, for some annoying reason, the demolitionist hadn't moved in yet, despite Abu's houses looking so beautiful and enticing. This is really bad, as grenades are practically required for the brain fight, and all I've got is some throwing knives and an umbrella. And it's at this point Abu tells us of a change that is about to throw us wildly off course. The initial runs that me and Therm had done were a couple of weeks ago, back on the previous patch. But these runs are being run on the most recent patch that just came out, 1.4.4. This is not a huge deal except for one major change. The Brain of Cthulhu now drops significantly less ore in her first phase, and meaning that you actually have to kill her in order to get enough ore for both the Deathbringer Pickaxe and the Blood's Butcherer. This greatly complicates me and Therm's plans to try and kill the Brain. As before, we could just sit back, throw a couple of grenades at the first phase, and then die. Now, not only would we be missing out on the best offensive option, but we'd also have to fully kill the boss. Things could not be worse. I timidly head over to the Crimson to meet Therm as he summons in the boss. If we lose this here, we'd suffer a major time loss and probably end up wasting a full another day in Terraria because of Skeletron. The pressure was on as Therm broke the last Crimson Heart. Yep, I'm screwed. He's directly on top of my one exit ticket out of here. Okay, I'm hoarding him off. Okay. Let's rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. Rumble. -la. Oh, gosh. We're getting our butt speed. But this time we know the technique to use the gun on the second phase. We do. Okay. Death time. All right. My ice sword is going to be awesome here. I know. You're kind of pulling through. Okay. We're actually going to do this. Yeah, I think so. All, All right, right. I got no shurikens. I'm going off vibes. I'm just... Oh, he's not teleporting. He gave up. Umbrella! <laughs> and thanks to my trusty umbrella, we're able to make it out alive. We breathed a sigh of relief as we had somehow made it past the devilish second phase. But without a second to get comfortable, Habu quickly got us all revved up once again. Uh, well, if it's nighttime, somebody can try to, you guys can try to do Skeletron. Uh... So with another fire lit under our little terrarian shoes, we had a new goal and a new boss to slay. And our time was quickly waning away on the nighttime, so we had to be quick. Thurm teleports the jungle to meet Habu and give him the Crimtain pickaxe. For his trip down to hell, and in return, he gives a bunch of weapons and other loot that he had picked up. Habu tells us that the night ends in about three minutes, and we haven't even built an arena yet. If you're at Skeletron, you have time to do it. We quickly throw down some platforms as tensions rise higher and higher. With only a couple minutes of the night remaining, we summon in Skeletron. Okay, I cannot get back up because he, he's directly on top I'm, of I'm the trying staircase. To, I'm trying to lure him over here. It's not really working, though. Come over here, wise guy! I'm gonna die instantly. <laughs> Oh, wait, I can enter from this side. That's right, because there's a hill. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even better. Yay. All right, Sean. This one's ours. Believe it. We could do this, Therm. We can do it. I'm a grenade him. I missed. <laughs> He's halfway dead. The shotgun is messing him up. Here, shoot him while, while I've got him here. Shoot him. Shoot him in the face. I got him, dude. Okay, wait, 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 we got this, we got this. We got this. Couple more hits should do it, baby. Oh my god, we did it. Okay. We did Down do we it. go, down we go. We had done it. With Skeletron down, all we had left to do was go into the dungeon and pick up the Muramasa. Through some speed runner bullshit, Habu knew that the first golden chest we encountered would be the Muramasa, based on the fact that there was green moss in the jungle. I, I really wish that was a joke. I, 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 I do not understand how he knows the things he knows. So we quickly rushed down there and opened up the first gold chest we found. Here we go. Golden chest. Muramasa found. Oh my god! Okay. Habu, on the other hand, had all but finished his portion of the run. He had already crafted the blade of grass. The only thing that he lacked was a bit of obsidian for the volcano crafting. I rush to a giant pool of water, and Habu comes in and makes a quick obsidian generator. And he gives me the other two swords we needed. Then I just wormhole over to Therm and... Crafted! Time. Woo! That would put us at... 25? Fourth place! All right. That's pretty good. I feel good about that. We had improved our time tenfold, and all it took was help from one of the most accomplished speedrunners in the entire Terraria community. I'm still counting this one as a win. 